next on Deck with Tim Black. Latinos in Texas, a, dis a district that's 97% Latino, went 75 percentage points for Donald Trump. Why? Misogyny. It's on the, no, that's it's why. on the border. It's the misogyny. border crisis is on their doorstep. So, so, and they were begging people to care about it for years. A district that's 97% Latino went 75 percent for Trump. They didn't care about the comments made in Madison Square Garden that they couldn't stop talking about on the view. They cared about their damn border. One of the major culprits that have been holding out the, holding back the Democratic Party for several years, if not decades, is a little show I like to call The View. Don't everybody clap at once. The View is an eyesore, but it's also a scourge upon our democracy or our democratic system or our republic. It is a problem. It misinforms. It disinforms. It engages in lowballing and hateful rhetoric nonsense, denialism, bubbleism, and all the other isms. And basically, it's just very hard to watch, and I got to watch it on routine basis because a lot of notable, notable figures go on here. You know, it's the uh, breakfast club for old people. <laughs> you would think I got writers when I come up with this stuff. Boy, bang! All right, check this out, man. So I got a couple of clips on The View I want to share with you. Stephen A. Smith was the guest, and they asked Stephen A. Smith if they're going to ask everybody, what happened? Why Kamala lose? The world hates women. Here goes Stephen A. Smith's response. The Republicans me, are sort of an extreme fringe. You think the Republicans me, are sort of an extreme fringe party? No, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that they're an extreme fringe party. I think that they're operating against those they believe are extreme on the left. Like, for example, when you talk about the LGBTQ community, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fiscal conservative and I'm a social liberal. Mm -hmm. I'm fiscal with my dollars. I ain't apologizing for not wanting to pay high taxes to anybody. Hey, 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 hey. Let's be clear here. See, I like Stephen A. Smith sometimes. Sometimes I can't stand him. Um, this is one of the times I like him, but let me point out something here, Stephen A. You're a very outspoken guy. That's what makes your brand work. You should have also be aware uh, Sonny is delusional. When you said it's the Republicans responding to the unhinged, crazy nut jobs on the other side, you talk about her ass. She is the most deranged, unhinged person. Her and Whoopi are, these, they represent everything wrong. <laughs> we got to do something with them. So it's just ironic that she would respond when her name was called. <laughs> I want to rewind that, guys. Check out that that exchange. You talk about her right in her face. Stephen A. Smooth. Are sort of an extreme fringe party. No, I don't. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think that they're an extreme fringe party. I think that they're operating against those they believe are extreme on the left. Like, for example, when you talk about the LGBTQ community, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fiscal conservative and I'm a social liberal. Mm -hmm. I'm fiscal with my dollars. I ain't apologizing for not wanting to pay high taxes to anybody. <laughs> I'm not apologizing <laughs> for that, right? But outside of that, I'm pretty liberal. Live and let live, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But you had folks on the left that were introducing some things when we when we got in the whole transgender issue and they were talking about bathrooms or they were talking about males transitioning to females and competing against girls in sports and stuff like that. These That's are just the one percent of the population. I understand that, but, but you know what? Add air in the NFL. But see, but I think that's where the mistake is made. Yeah, you're saying it's ridiculous. I don't disagree with you, yeah. but most of the, the voters out there don't think like that. But they but that means they don't have the information. OK, but 90 percent of the voters don't have the information. If you hold on a second, man, and this thing right here, you know, I have I have got into it with people about this issue. Yeah, I used to think it's only a one percent of the population, too. Then I start thinking. Why do that for 1% of the population? Like, and not all trans people think that trans people should be able to, like, if you are, if you have the, you know, the, if you have the advantages of being a male, you should not be playing with women. Not all trans people believe that. But for some reason, you're going to defend that because that's part of your kooky ideology. 
And most normal people would not defend that. It's not against trans people. I don't care what you want to be. Be you. Whatever you only get a short time on this work in this life. We all get a short time. I'm not begrudging anybody for how they want to enjoy that time, how they want to spend that time. As long as you ain't hurt nobody, do your thing. Okay. That ain't what people are concerned about. They're concerned about you impacting everybody else. For other people's whatever they want to do. Like I said, it's not even most, I don't even, I do not believe just because you're a trans person, you think a male, uh, that you think that they should be able to compete against women or people. Not everybody believes that. But see, Sonny will ride with that. It's delusional. It's stupid. Yes, it's a small segment of society that we're talking about and how often does this happen? Not a lot. And that used to be how I used to feel. But then I started looking at it the other way. Why am I defending this? Won't you just go play with the guys? Why you got to play with them? Well, maybe you don't want to play sports then. Maybe that's something that you don't get to do if you get to choose to do this. There's things I don't get to do like buy hair care products. So I'm just saying, like, maybe you don't get to do that. Is that so crazy? I mean, just to keep down this, this arguing. But Sonny's making the argument that, oh, so people are just dumb because they don't know what I know because, you know, I'm a lawyer. I was a prosecutor. Prosecute your ass over there somewhere. Prosecute that L that you just got. Sonny Houston, Sonny Hawson is a hard-headed person. She's an ideologue. And it will be the death of her party. All this crap that she's going to do, she ain't going to move off her square of being hard-headed, stubborn, and unmovable. Sometimes the stupid is strong with them. Haughty, a haughty moron, even. Tired of the same old type of politics? Well, welcome to the Tim Black Show. We do live streams every day at 9.30 p.m. Sunday through Friday, Sunday through Friday. So be here and be a part of the change for the people. And now, back to the show. Out there busting your tail to make ends meet and to pay your bills and you're going to work every day and you got a family to take care of and you got to stay you in New York City, you're getting stuck two hours of your day, you're stuck in traffic. You gotta say you got a whole bunch of stuff to go through. You don't have time to know what you and maybe I you know. Maybe you need to listen to the news when you're in traffic. Well, well again, maybe I agree not. With that. Not be listen to her. The problem, see, when you look, guys, look, honestly, honestly, folks, here we go. Let's go here. Whenever you have a business, and politics is a business. When you have a business, and you got to blame the customer, you lost. Yeah. Whenever you got to blame the customer for why they don't like what you're selling, you lost. That's how it works. Yeah, you don't get to go, oh, well, you're just dumb then. You need to just learn more because you're... No. You're dumb because you're trying to sell ideas in order to get in power. Okay? And if that's what you're trying to do, you need to work on your ideas. Because evidently, most of America does not like your ideas. They're not interested in those ideas. Those ideas are not attractive to the people that you're selling them to. You don't get to say, hey, oh, what you, what you, what you don't like? You don't like broccoli. Oh, you should like broccoli. He just sucker, this sucker don't like. Hey, 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 he don't like, he don't like broccoli. Can you imagine this? No, I, I don't like broccoli. Who raised you not to like this broccoli? Who's this person? See, see, this is how Democrats are. Something's wrong with you. You weren't raised right. You shouldn't even be in our country not knowing how to, not liking broccoli. Everybody comes in here loves broccoli. We're a broccoli country. Broccoli restaurant. Well, they won't be eating at your restaurant. But in this case, they won't be voting for you. You won't be in power. You're out of power. So look, hey, I got no problems with people being as dumb. I'm sorry. If you want to be stubborn like Sonny, that's fine. Just stop crying when you get the L. That's all. 
And don't pretend you don't understand why you got the L. Steve, Stephen A. Smith just laid out a perfectly good scenario of an example, and she showed she'd rather go down with the ship. Fine. Fine. You'd rather lose 70% of the country to support 1% of the country, and not even all of them agree with that. Not even all of them want that. They probably think, this brings undue attention to us. We don't need this type of stigma above us. We just want to live our lives as we want to live our lives. Like, not every person that's trans wants to play sports. And they got to hear this all the time. So look at it from that way as well. Because there are some things that people complain about that I don't complain about. I'd be like, damn, why should I start complaining about that? That's BS. That's small pride. We don't care about that. We over here. Hey, man, y'all got to put Rosa Parks on the $50 bill. I don't need it on no $50 bill. We ain't talking about reparations. We ain't talking about some shit I care about. I don't care about that. It wasn't Rosa Parks. It was Madam C.J. Walker. Oh, hurry, tell me. Hurry, tell me. I ain't care about that. There were the Congressional Black Caucus was arguing about that. I didn't care about that. I was sitting over here as a black man going, I don't give a damn. Why are we arguing about that? Let's argue about some stuff that matter. And for the for the record, I don't think her her and Tommy will want to be sold again. Shoot. I'm sorry. Where was I at? Okay, back to Sunny Hostel. The point is, I don't think you're doing anybody any favors, but your virtual signaling. It's virtual signaling dumb stuff that the Democrats do is part of the reason they lost. Come on, see what they Smith hit them. Yeah. 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 Listen to stuff that's going to take you away from the things yeah. that brings that's down not. your spirit. Yeah. And that's unfortunately what most voters are doing. Let yeah. me ask you this. How, how you want to speak? No. Okay. See, when they try to speak logic, sense, realness into the, you know, to the, uh, the stubborn, <laughs> he tried to do it. It was like he was just speaking into a room of empty chairs because they weren't hearing him. Well, Sonny and Whoopi weren't here, I don't think. I don't even know Whoopi's response. Here goes another clip where Elisa, okay, the, the white lady on the on the end here, she had a conversation, she had a back and forth with Sonny here. And it was like at some point, it's like Elisa, she just says, you know what? I'm tired of you bullying me, Sonny. And then let Sonny have it. Check this out. I think that in this post-mortem that needs to happen with Democrats, they need to think about why wasn't she given more lead time? Why didn't Biden give her six months or a year to run? But there's bigger pictures. That's a micro. There are some macro issues here. The fact that the nation elected somebody like Donald Trump, who even people who voted for him, I talked to so many of these people, will say, I don't like him. I don't like the things he says, but I felt like my life was better under him. I think that we I think that a lot of Democrats missed the moment. They were looking at the micro and not the macro. Do you so think there's, the Republicans there's, missed the moment. What about a, a postmortem on the but, Republican Party? Which thank, is the I Trump was just party about right to say that. swept, though. The, I mean, I, I've been they talking about what I'd like to see from the Republican Party. They won, but, but they're America, morally bankrupt. But America just gave them. So let me let me just make my point here. Listen to her. So she doesn't understand. She said they won, but they were morally bankrupt. Let's have an autopsy about the Republicans. Why? If you got the ring, lady. See how delusional they are? See how they is? They just won. What autopsy do you want them to do? How they can beat you further into the oblivion? I mean, they don't need to be, they're not the ones that need to go back to the drawing boards. You are. You are. And this is how they think, man. You cannot get through to them. You can't reason with them. It's just talking to a cinder block, man. It, what, what this woman says, and I don't often agree with her. Now that I know her backstory, she used to work for Trump. Now she don't know. She, now she switched to Democrat. She switched to Democrat because that was the easier way to get to the money. You guys got to understand, these people don't have any souls. So she switched Democrat to get to the money. Now that Trump won, now she's going to try to switch back. She's just kind of doing it now. Now she got all this criticism for the Democrats. And that's why son was like, well, hold on. Why are we not criticizing Republicans? That's what we do here. We criticize Republicans. They're morally bankrupt, right? Why are you having criticism for Democrats? Because 
Maybe Elisa wants to go work for Trump again. Yeah. Ain't gonna be that much work in the Kamala Harris team, is it? Sonny is bitter as hell. Part of the reason I think Sonny's so bitter is because Sonny had her eyes on a job in the Kamala administration. Doing something. She was quick to say how well she knew Kamala. They go way back. That's her soul friend. And blah, blah. Everybody look at it, hook themselves up. Okay? Hey, we work our asses off. We get what we get out of life. We build what we build on our own. But these guys, these elites, they all work together. They network. They can do each other favors. You know, even though I don't see much favors being done from Sonny to Kamala, in fact, you know, I, I question. So you have people talking about, well, how did he win Michigan? Because Democrats are saying, oh, she should have talked more about Gaza. No, union halls were empty. Dearborn went for Donald Trump. This is not about a micro issue like Gaza. It's people saying the cost of living is too high. The wages are too low. My life felt better under him. And I know what we'll say. Well, Goldman Sachs says the economy will do better under her. The analysts at, um, at UPenn and Warren. We'll see. Nobody who is struggling to make ends meet at the table, like how am I going to pay this bill, cares what Wharton That's professors because they were say about the and just one more thing I want to mm -hmm. say. This issue of abortion, which I hope we can unpack more. Um, there are a lot of women who cared about abortion, but they were in states like Pennsylvania where they don't have an ultra restrictive abortion law. They were voting more because they're like pocket bush it, it, pocketbook issues matter more than if a woman in Alabama is able but to get an abortion. But they're going to do worse under a Trump administration. But the I only people that are going to do well are the millionaires the, and the it, billionaires. It, and, and finally, we talk a lot about these different demographics and these assumptions of where they're going to... Millionaires and billionaires do well under Trump, huh? Like yourself. But I'm trying to tell you guys. First of all, Trump's tax breaks helped everybody. Millionaires and billionaires weren't the only one that got tax breaks. So that's cap. They got more of a tax break, but everybody got a tax break under Trump. But when she says it only helps millionaires and billionaires, what's sunny? See, people don't be seeing behind this, you know, pick your spots. She said they've been disinformation. MSNBC, CNN, ABC, CBS, all of them misinformation. I don't know where. Oh, you got you. So she's trying to say that if you watch the view, you'll be informed. I think you'd be misinformed if you watch the view. I go Latinos in Texas, a, dis, a district that's 97 percent Latino, went 75 percentage points for Donald Trump. Why? Misogyny. It's on the, no, that's it's why. on the border. It's the misogyny. border crisis is on their doorstep. So, so and they were listen to this point Alyssa just made. She says there is a district in Texas that went 75 percent for Trump after last time it went for Biden. And. Sonny says it's because of misogyny. And Alyssa said, no, it's on the border. And you opened up the border. Biden opened up the border on this district. Oh, we play it because I want to make sure people hear this. This is the people to talk for the Democrats. This is the people. These are the, these are the spokespeople for the Democratic Party. Listen to this exchange. This is it. This is all. This is everything percentage points for Donald Trump where they're going to go. Latinos in Texas, a, dis a district that's 97 percent Latino, went 75 percentage points for Donald Trump. Why? Misogyny. It's on the, no, that's it's why. on the border. It's the border misogyny. crisis is on their doorstep. So, so and they were begging people to care about it for years. We need a, a district that's 97 percent Latino went 75 percent for Trump. They didn't care about the comments made in Madison Square Garden that they couldn't stop talking about on The View. They didn't care that Kamala had collard greens in her tub. They cared about that damn border. And Sonny won't even acknowledge that could be an issue. She doesn't give a damn if people are suffering behind that border issue. People that live at that, live with that at their border issue. She doesn't care. She called them racist or misogynist. So you can't you can't. It's like somebody walk. Can you imagine somebody walks up to you, punches you in your face, 
knocks out a couple of your teeth. And you say, I'm going to call the cops. They say, see, you're racist. Some things out of my mouth. You would just let anybody else punch you in the mouth. It don't make sense. A guy walks up, punches a woman in the head, and then he calls the cops, and she says, I mean, you, I mean, you get it. You get it. What I'm saying is, with the Democratic Party, there's no ownership. There's denial, deflect, denial, deflect, racism, misogyny, or something. And that's from a person that's B1, man. I stand 10 toes down. I ride for my people on issues. I do it all day, every day, twice on Sundays. But what I'm not into is what they do. What the Democrats do is they use blackness, they use they use gender, they use orientation, all as a wedge in order to try to win to play this play this role like they're the defenders of some type of virtuous thing. Meanwhile, they drop bombs on kids. Meanwhile, they leave us sleeping on the streets in front of buildings with heat on them. Meanwhile, they watch us go to prison, prison, uh, jail to prison, school, school to prison pipeline. They watch our children be 40% in the, under the poverty rate. They watch us be 40% of the homeless population, but then they want to say black out their mouth all the time. Well, you know what? If you really, if Kamala was really caring about black people, not just calling herself black, she'd have been working on that 40% poverty rate. She'd have been doing that the last four years. That would have been her pet issue. Was it a pet issue? Was it a pet issue to help us stop being 40% of the homeless rate? 50% of homeless families are black. She said she black, right? I kept having to hear that. Why wasn't she working on that issue? So she's not connected to black people at all. It's just words and denials and deflections. Alyssa brings up a good point. I don't have to agree with her on anything other than this point. We just people piecemeal. Point by point, because if we judge people based on totality of everything they've ever said, if we can agree with them on anything, we would never agree with anybody on anything. She's right about this. Next. <laughs> Next. So we can see this is the thing, man. This is why I say the blame game with the Democratic Party runs deep. This is what they do. This is what they're accustomed to doing. They will not admit anything. To admit fault is to is, is a weakness. Are they going to go back behind closed doors? Are they going to do an actual autopsy of what got them here? How they got this sale? I don't think they will. I think they're too stubborn to do that. I think there's too much money. It's not just stubborn. It's also money and donors and uh, all types of corporate, corporate sponsors and all these other things. Democrats don't just pick issues. They pick the issues that were chosen for them by their big donors. That's how it works.